Taking a look at Undiscovered Country by Image Comics. This is a brand new series by Scott Snyder, Charles Soleil, art by Giuseppe Camincoli, and Danielle Orlandani. <laughs> These names are going to kill me, but it's an incredible book. Let's dive into it. Hey there, this is Perch. Uh, I just want to get it out of the way right away. Um, I cannot pronounce these people's names. <laughs> I, 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 I just, I know I've, I've had uh, Giuseppe I've met, um, and I, I think I'm close enough. But uh, poor Danielle uh, Orlandini, I, I hope I'm close. Uh, but this is a brand new comic by Image. Uh, it's got a lot of, of interesting hype. So one of the curious things about this comic is that it's, of course, got some top talent on it. Scott Snyder and Charles Soleil are um, pretty pretty big names, of course, been doing some big things. Scott Snyder is arguably at the top of, of uh, DC's food chain right now in terms of the kind of the big-time stories he's been told. He's reliably been the guy, the go-to guy, to sell and land a big event. And so a new comic with Image, um, certainly taking a bigger step forward uh, than some of the other efforts in the last couple of years. It's got some good marketing behind it, but it's also had a, a very strange kind of counter marketing against it. Uh, when the comic was first announced, it's this image and kind of the the teaser of 30 years ago, America basically walled itself off, cut itself off from the outside world, and nobody's heard from it since. And now people are going back in. That was, that was the hook uh, in a nutshell. And immediately people on kind of both sides of the political fence uh, associated walls and America and Trump and spun those three together as fast as they could. And both in a pro and a con way, uh, people started immediately saying it's an allegory for current politics and, oh, this is America being isolationist and all the rest. And I, I remember saying at the time, that didn't seem right based on the creators involved and the hook and what it was supposed to be. But uh, the, the the rumor mill went on and, and people chased each other back and forth as being just another thing to fight about. Videos were made. Now, finally, the comic is in hand. So is it is it a big Trump allegory? Well, the answer is absolutely not. And this is going to be one of those comics that uh, is promised to have a nice good run of, you know, at least, you know, three years more of, of comics. Um, it's got the potential to be the next um, Walking Dead, I would say, for Image in terms of scope and grandeur. Um, Snyder and Soleil, uh, it, they, it gives off a feeling that there was a lot of planning that goes into this. And as you're reading the comic, you get that feel and then you get a little bit of the, the history or the backstory into how this comic came about. And you realize that, yeah, this this comic has actually been planned and in existence and talked about for quite a long time, uh, longer than longer than Trump, <laughs> which once again, but oh well. So I think it's fortuitous uh, in a certain way that it's able to get a little bit of extra publicity by nature of uh, current politics and, and walls and so on. But if you stop there and you assume that's what the comic uh, is all about, then you're going to miss out on a lot. And I think if you choose to overlay onto this comic, politics and walls and other things, then then you're doing yourself a big disservice and you're going to miss a lot of this story. So for me, uh, and now spoilers as we go, when I read this comic for the first time, and I want to give a very big thanks for the advanced copy that I got, uh, really appreciate it. Uh, the support that I get from a lot of the creators is, um, is, is really, I'm really thankful to it. And uh, I can't, I can't, I can't thank enough. And so I'll do my part by trying to promote some really great work. So thank you. But um, the feeling I got in this comic as I read it was the same feeling I have when uh, I first watched Aliens, the second one. And my favorite part of that movie, I would say, was the first 45 minutes or so where this mission is getting set up or we're meeting some characters that are thrown together. We have some different motivations. We have some people who are uh, there for glory and we have some people that are there because they're told to because they're part of the military we have some people who think it's a big joke uh some people who are fearful of the whole thing and it's this getting ready to go into the unknown with kind of this sense of foreboding dread that this comic nails really really well so that feeling is really strong for me as i'm reading that this that's what i got and the the other half of this comic i would say is a little bit of, of lost uh 
the TV show, the, the, the good part of Lost, where they were using flashbacks to kind of frame up the characters. So the main story was thrusting ahead, but they'd flash back a little bit to give motivation and it fit the environment of what was going on. And I think the two elements combine really nicely. So the comic begins basically, and I'm going to do this review a little different. I'm not going to go through you know page by page. I'm going to give you kind of the flavor of, of what's here. And I do encourage you to pick this up. This is clearly going to be a comic that's going to be one of those uh, surprise hits. You know, it, it, it's just going to do very, very well. I want to say on the offset one other thing. Uh, Giuseppe uh, Comancoli, I I've not always been the biggest fan of his work. Uh, there's been something about it that uh, when it was Spider-Man and, and some of the other stuff that just hasn't seemed um, alive, like he was uh, not restraining himself. And I, I'm, that's not being really fair. I, I think he's an, he's a very good talent, clearly. But there's been something where I, I felt like he um, he needed to cut loose or, or do somebody's characters that were more his own and not somebody else's. And so this book, I think I'm just very impressed by what he's able to do. Uh, the coloring by Matt Wilson, uh, lettering by Crank, but uh, the the coloring and the art and and what's been brought to it, um, and Danielle or Orlandini, uh, really, it's it's very unique, very powerful scenes, uh, lots of complexity. There's a lot of of it's not love, but there's a lot of passion on the page here. There's a lot of of uh, risk taking panels and shots, things that could have been drawn much easier, much safer, uh, without a lot of, of effort. And instead they went for the harder shots, the harder angles, the tougher positions, the, 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 just, just, they, this could have been done cheaper, easier, simpler. And instead the artist, uh, Giuseppe leaned in to a lot of very complicated images and pages with tons of detail. So this mission is heading into America and we're learning a little bit as we go that basically this is uh, kind of first time they're going to pass over the border. Um, they're going to enter into America and they've been invited to some extent, but just as they've kind of kind of taken down their guard missile launches up and uh, they're, they're not safe and they're, they're under attack. So we get our first flashback back to Athens. We're learning a little bit more of this world. The other benefit that flashbacks have in this comic is to lay out the entire universe here. So once again, we get a gorgeous page by Giuseppe here with just a lot of detail. Here's a case where you could have just drawn a bluff and a couple of little trees, but instead there's the minute detail into the entire surroundings and it, it gives the sense of this, this world gone wrong. One of the things a lot of people got wrong about this comic is they assumed that, oh, what will happen is the rest of the world's all amazing and peaceful and and the United States has fallen into like some kind of retro hillbilly racist zombie town. And instead, we learn that the rest of the world has fallen into disarray. There's a plague that's going on. A uh, fever is spreading. They're not able to control it. Uh, copters are, are spraying antiseptic, uh, it, it pesticide, for lack of a better word, on people. And they're just, you know, there's there's looting. People are stealing uh, roofs off of sick people just to try and protect themselves, and it's it's the world is is wrecked. And um, our uh, doctor, Doctor Graves, who's trying to save lives but failing, is uh, picked up for this mission. Said that uh, you know we need you here, and she's taken away. We know she's on the helicopter. We come back to the future. Um, we're in this area of the country, uh, Utah. Nevada, perhaps. Um, some of, some would suggest somewhere near Monument Valley, but it's uh, basically the helicopter's crashed. Uh, they've sustained injuries. Um, we're we're learning a little bit more. There's some arguments going on about you know this this group. Uh, so we're getting a little bit more of the dynamic there, and they're going to set off to try and figure out what's going on, where they are, uh, leaving some people back at the copter to make the repairs and try and get going. They're now confused because they were they're saying we were invited in to America and now we've been shot down. There's nobody around. It's uh, it's desolate and nobody's quite sure what's going on. The entire mission is, has fallen into chaos immediately. Um, so we get our second flashback now into Istanbul and Turkey. And basically they reveal this offer. And the offer is that a gentleman, uh, well-dressed, kind of uh, Uncle Sam meets Colonel Sanders type character, <laughs> um, Sam Elgin, is basically saying, hey, we know that the world is, is the sky virus is here, the world is falling, you've got maybe another year, year and a half, 
uh, or, you know, half a year, you've, you've got very little time. The world is going to die, but America has a cure and uh, we're willing to share it with you, both empires. So we learned that uh, basically the globe has been split into kind of two different uh, ruling slash empires. And they're, you know, America's welcoming men wants to be a shining beacon again. And so they're putting together this team that's going to head in to the Aurora Project near Leadville, Colorado, a place I'm familiar with. And uh, they are are going to share this. So they're, they're going to bring this crew in to kind of take them up on this offer, see what's going on. Uh, we've got the doctor and her brother who's been uh, kind of an outcast and, and hunted, if you will. He's well, the person who got closest to America, got back to alive. Um, and there, you know, it's this kind of ragtag group of people don't really trust each other necessarily, but you know, the world is on the brink and, and they need this level of survival. We're not uh, getting the whole world fleshed out. It's clear that that's going to be done over future issues. But what's intriguing here is that, you know, there, the outside world is desperate. Things are not going well. There's a olive branch of sorts that's reached out from this country that's been in complete isolation no word nothing for 30 years they have no idea what's there and it's almost like going into a land of the lost type environment where nobody knows what's there nobody knows what to encounter so this we've reignited this whole sense of mystery into a place we all know very well which is the, which is america so uh they're there as they investigate things they see a television they're looking into and they get up above this ridge and they see just a crazy uh, group that's found the chopper and it's comprised of like a giant snake monster, a squid, uh, shark, um, <laughs> beetles, a mutant, I'm just mutated cars. It's got a Mad Max meets Land of the Lost feel here. Um, men dressed up like in, in zombie type, uh, uh, not zombie, some mummy type wrappings. And they are saying, you know, basically have invaded the United States of America and this giant, uh, you know, mutated buffalo uh, just bites off the uh, the kind of mission leader, the the flyer's uh, foot. And, uh, you know, you shall not invade American soil. Completely the opposite of a, an olive branch welcoming these people in. And so, you know, they're, they're spotted on the ridge. The rest of the team is like, oh, you know, <laughs> what are you going to do with this? Completely uh, dumbfounded in that you've got this kind of completely insane group of kind of mutated creatures and things here. Um, they, they turn to run, they get up over the other ridge and they see kind of a different level of, uh, you know, more vehicles, more Mad Max type, uh, creations, houses on tractors and, and, uh, kind of the mortal engines type giant, almost city, uh, heading out. It is just, uh, completely everything is upside down. Are these, they're working together different. Is this some kind of warring faction? They're finally beckoned into a cave by a mysterious kind of cloaked figure who says, you know, follow me if you want to live. <laughs> Basically, you've got the destiny man, wolves on your ass, I'll be here any minute. And in they go, and they're, you know, again, they're, people are kind of dumb, you know, gob smacked into a, a certain sense of, of fear. They wander into this cave and there they meet, uh, you know, the silent majority and they're, they're called silent because they can't make any noise or they'll be found a minority because there's not many left. It's basically these, these cave dwelling uh, people and they are, uh, you know, basically told, make yourself at home in this new kind of subterranean environment. The, uh, the brother sister pair are taken into uh, the, the, uh, this, this room kind of in a cave where they see a brief glimpse at a map. This is reminiscent certainly of the old man Logan kind of a vehicle of, of seeing a map of the country. And we've got, uh, parts of it kind of cordoned off and we've got, you know, a sea with like a Loch Ness monster inside of it. That's, that's overflown. We've got places, the code lands, the new people, purple mountain kingdom, tempest, te tempest tested the shining sea, all kind of with a um, red, white, and blue path, if you will, to the center, you know, somewhere in, say, Nebraska type area. And that is, uh, it, it's just, a, it's, a, it's a country that's changed. One says, that's the U.S., that's what it's become. America never stays the same for long. Anyway, this is where we're going to make our plan to walk into the heartland. And uh, she says, what do you mean? This is a diplomatic mission. We were sent a message. And he says, uh, you know, he takes off his mask and it's, it's, he says his name is Sam, Sam Elgin. But this Sam Elgin looks radically different from the Sam we saw in the video. 
and he wants uh, them to save America. So what is the true mission? What is happening here? And that's where our first issue ends. So a lot, is, a lot to unpack. We've, we've seen the outside world. We've seen a bit of America, just enough to see that it is uh, completely turned on its ear uh, crazy there. The outside world is, you know, a six months maybe to survive for the for the rest of the entire country. Um, nowhere is safe. The mission they thought they were on is is blown up. Is there a cure? Does any of that exist? Who lured them into America in the first place? Um, what are you know? Lots of far more questions. Almost on every page, we've got questions with very little answers. So now the unpacking begins. Now we're going to see what the issue has in store and what the series has in store for us. So. The issue closes there. Pretty incredible, I think, uh, debut shot for a series. There's a lot of world building, a lot of care, a lot of love. Um, we get a couple of the, you know, for lack of a better word, the data sheets. So uh, like Hickman did for uh, X-Men, we're getting the timeline of the ceiling in the United States of America. So we see a little bit about what happens, uh, why they sold, um, what kind of technology existed to zero day when in 2029 this all happened, the borders closed and and United States of America sealed itself off. Um, you know, and, and very smart, very smart, very clever issue, a lot of depth to it, but more importantly, a lot of care. I mean, some comics you read them, you can tell it's a story the authors really want to tell. Some stories just feel like a, a passion project. This one felt like a, a project of people who cared about the story they were telling. It was a story they wanted to tell. And so there's, there's very nice kind of a bunch of back of the page material, this origins bit where um, Scott and uh, Snyder tells a little bit about kind of the story they want to tell, how the origins is went all the way back to 2012, talks about some of the um, the things that they did, some of the, the you know, places they got to see back in their careers and and how the story began to form and, and came on and, and put it all together. So a lot of really cool ideas. And I think this one is the key. What if the United States suddenly sealed itself off entirely from the rest of the world, became a black box, stayed that way for 30 days, and the door opened and people were let in? What would they see? What would that look like? What kind of experience would that be? And I think it's coming at us from both sides. We have the outside world with uh, with problems and we have the, uh, the inside world and, and both kind of unknowns hitting each other in the same place and colliding. So really in, incredible. Um, you know, one thing I just would think I would add, um, I love that uh, Giuseppe uh, Camicoli, again, the work looks really incredible, just like there's a passion back to it. And um, there is an inker. There's an actual inker on the book. Uh, Daniela <laughs> Orlandini um, is actually bringing it to life. And this is a just proof of what happens when you actually have a full art team of a penciler and an inker, how the combination together just looks really, really incredible. So wonderful stuff. We see a little bit about the logos and some of the cover uh, things that, that were done there. And uh, a lot of really just incredible things in this comic. I think we're going to learn more about the brother sister. We're going to learn more about the dynamic they are, why uh, he got to be the way he got, uh, more about what happened when this uh, country sealed itself off and uh, you know more about this journey that they're going to be on, more about the uh, this destiny man and and what what that's all up to and what you know is this you know there's shades of Mad Max here, there's shades of I mentioned Land of Lost. I have got an aliens feel to it. Um, a lot of different pieces here about this new world, this new environment, and everything that goes along with it. So, um, just just a lot, a lot to digest. Um, very, very interested in seeing how this is all going to be put together. Um, it's going to get a lot worse before it gets better, <laughs> if you will. But the the journey here is about revealing and un unwrapping this mystery. And I love that it's a comic that's that's going to have a mystery again. I. I how how often do we get mysteries in comics? This is a true mystery, a true new world that we get to uh, uncover together. And the, the creators all feel like they're having the time of their lives. And that that spirit is infectious. So I, I'm a big fan of this book. I enjoyed it. Is it for you? Well, if you like mysteries, if you like world building, if you like sci-fi, uh, this has definitely got all those elements, a little bit of fantasy, a little bit of sci-fi. Um, definitely something you can enter into without any preconceived comic uh, notions or, or things that you, you know or think you know and just have a fresh comic to read. Um, is it not for you? I mean, this isn't a superhero cape book. Um, this isn't 
a going to be a kind of flashy '90s style uh, shoot 'em up battle, but this is a a clever, clever book, and I think uh, more people will like this than not. So I, I would recommend it. Certainly worth giving a try. It's nice to come in at the ground floor for new things. And um, once again, I want to say a huge thank you for the preview copy. And uh, definitely will will highly recommend this. And people should pick it up. Did you see it? Did you read it? I uh, would love to know your thoughts. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought of the issue. Let me know what you hope to see, what you think this comic is going. And more than anything, uh, like, subscribe if you want to see more <laughs> other comics. You want to, I'm going to be following along with this one for its run. Uh, but for this time, thanks for listening.